yesterday we derived an expression for uh, impedance of a s uh, circuit uh, made from a resistor, an inductor, and a capacitor connected in a series. This is actually a very important uh, circuit. Uh, this circuit allows us to use cellular phones to, to receive TV uh, signals to listen to, to radio. Um, the circuit is uh, referred to as a resonant circuit. And, uh, <coughs> well, let's see why is it called a resonant circuit. Um, so let's start with the expression for, uh, for impedance. This is the expression for uh, impedance of a series RLC circuit. Now remember one thing that that, that uh, formula for impedance is valid only if the three elements are connected in series. So don't think that in any connection this is the case. Uh, in, uh, if we connect uh, elements parallel then we will get a different expression for uh, for uh, uh, impedance. Well <coughs> Impedance is a coefficient which relates what with what? Uh, well, somehow it relates uh, potential difference with current, but be more uh, pr uh, specific. Does because uh, impedance does not relate directly uh, potential difference across a system with a with a, uh, voltage peak values. Correct. It, it relates peak values. All right. So. <coughs> And root mean square values as well. So, uh, yes, Andrew. Is it only for sinusoidal where 3D squared and peak are both? We say? Is it only for sinusoidal where, where it's peak Co and, and uh, well, uh, imp uh, impedance? Uh, yeah, because uh, impedance of elements is a function of frequency. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> so, indeed, it is for, uh, for sinusoidal. I mean, it is that, uh, um, well, we'll talk actually what, what happens if we have. Uh, not sinusoidal, if we have more uh, elements, because uh, <coughs> for any signal, actually, I, I have already mentioned, I know that you don't have appropriate mathematical background, but every signal uh, can be considered as a superposition of sinusoidal signals. Uh, do you recall what do we call the series in which we uh, an arbitrary function represent as a combination of sinusoidal function? If we, if, we, if we represent a function in, in terms of power function, this series is called the, you should know this one. Uh, which one? No, in power, uh, if we represent in power series, the, what is the name? Uh, I mean, of, of the, uh, there are two n uh, names of people who, uh, well, uh, develop, yes, Tien? Taylor and McLaurin, correct. Taylor is, if we, if we represent in power series of, x minus x zero, and McLaurin is if we assume that x zero is zero. Uh, right, so, so Taylor and McLaurin series are expansions of a function into a power, into power series. Uh, <coughs> and actually these series are also important in physics, um, <coughs> particularly modern physics, in quantum mechanics. Uh, so those of you who will study quantum mechanics and probably these will be electrical engineers, you will encounter a uh, power series. Uh, uh, now, the series in terms of trigonometric functions are referred to as Fourier series. And Fourier series are important for any types of vibrations because any type of vibration can be represented as a superposition of sinusoidal vibrations. Uh, which also are referred to as harmonic uh, 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 oscillations. So if we have a certain arbitrary signal, we can consider it as a superposition of sinusoidal functions. And then for each of those functions, complex of impedance exists. We can calculate for each term in the series and then recombine it back to see what will happen if a signal is transmitted through a certain circuit. All right. <coughs> Now, uh, but uh, resonant circuit actually uh, is designed to work with the sinusoidal oscillations. It is that the wave, uh, electromagnetic wave broadcast by Fox uh, uh, TV station, for example, is a sinusoidal oscillation. And, and, and uh, 
your TV set has a resonance circuit which is, well, <coughs> you know that it is tuned to a particular station and today we will understand what, it is, what does it mean that it is tuned and therefore it receives this particular uh, station. But the station say, sends a sinusoidal uh, uh, signal. <coughs> All right. So let's now, let's now assume that we have then we have a, a, a source, uh, actually we could have a lot of sources, but let's say that we have a source which produces root mean square value of one volt and then we will change the frequency of the source. What will happen in the current? Actually take a look at the Take a take a look at the at the situation. So if <laughs> if we uh, if oscillations, the so root mean square value of oscillations is one volt, and uh, angular frequency is very low, close to zero. Uh, <coughs> yes. Yeah, so so oscillations barely happen. Let's see what kind of impedance we are going to to get if angular frequency is close to zero. This term is close to zero. Can you see that? Now, how about this term? This one is huge. This becomes huge. Well, how about this entire expression? It becomes huge. The denominator becomes huge. One volt divided by huge number will give me one what value of root mean square value for the current? Yes, Kyle? very small, close to zero. All right, now let's see that I'll sweep the frequency really fast. Um, so let's say that I'll go to uh, high frequency, frequency close to infinity. What will happen? What will happen with this term? This term now becomes huge. This term becomes close to zero. Well, this square becomes huge. The denominator is huge. What can we say about root mean square value of the current? It's going to be close to zero again, right? So we see that for low frequency and high frequency, root mean square value of the current flowing through this circuit is practically zero. Uh, well, how about between? What happens in between? Well, root mean square value of the electromotive force is a positive number. This is a positive number. Well, it means that it isn't zero. Uh, uh, so there is, between zero uh, frequency and infinite frequency, we have a frequency at which uh, root mean square value of the current has the highest value. Uh, <coughs> this frequency is referred to as resonant frequency because for a given oscillations of the uh, electromotive force, we are getting the highest value of the current in the circuit. Um, let's try to, to imagine now uh, what is that, uh, the angular, this resonant angular frequency. What conditions has to be uh, achieved in order to have the highest root mean square value of the current? Well, here is one volt. This, I said that this is one volt. So what value should the denominator assume in order to have the highest current. What value, how should we choose angular frequency? Well, we should choose angular frequency in such a way that the denominator has the smallest value, right? Now, what is, what is the smallest value of the denominator when, when it can happen? Now, look at that. R squared is a positive number and it's independent of frequency. So how frequency can affect the first term? Cannot, right? Now, here we have square, so this is also a positive number, right? However, that one depends on frequency. Uh, <coughs> so in order to make the denominator the smallest, what should be the value of the term, of this term? This term should assume its smallest possible value, and the smallest possible value for this term is zero. <coughs> All right. Actually, here is the plot for a given uh, for a given frequency. This is the plot of root mean square value of the uh, current at a particular 
uh, uh, resistance of the resistor. Uh, there is a certain frequency that uh, root mean square value has the highest uh, of the current has the highest value. Uh, now, when I'm designing when I'm designing the uh, the circuit, and uh, well, I find this uh, uh, resonant angular frequency. How how should I tr select the resistor in order to have this current as high as possible? Because yeah, now I'm thinking about designing a circuit, not looking for the resonant uh, frequency, but I'm designing a circuit and I want to have a circuit which will have the highest possible root mean square value of the current at the resonance. Low resistance of the resistor, correct? I will have to have a low resistance of the resistor. So if I change resistance of the resistor, I can get the uh, uh, current, a uh, higher value for the uh, for the current. All right, let's now determine what is the value of uh, angular frequency, possible angular frequency. Well, <coughs> we see that it can hap that it has to happen when this term is going to be zero. So if I write down that, which means that omega L uh, or impedance of the inductor must be equal to impedance of the capacitor then it is going to be zero. And if I write the equation omega L equals 1 over omega C and solve for, uh, for, for omega, I will get the value for resonant frequency to be 1 over square root of inductance of the inductor multiplied by uh, capacitance of the uh, capacitor. Um, how about if we uh, <coughs> solve a quick uh, problem? Um, Let's say that root mean square value of that voltage here is one, uh, uh, one uh, volt. At, and at resonant frequency, impedance of each element is one ohm. Well, how about actually, why don't we say that uh, electromotive, uh, root mean square value of electromotive force is three volts. It's three volts. And uh, well, one ohm, uh, and element, each element has impedance of, let's make, one kilo ohm at resonant frequency. What current will, is going to flow in the circuit? Go ahead and solve it. Um, let me write down the, uh, the uh, impedance. So impedance of a resistor is one kilo ohm. Impedance of the inductor is one kilo ohm. And the impedance of the capacitor is one kilo ohm. And uh, electromotive f root mean square value of electromotive force is three volts. Uh, now you are working, you are trying to find what uh, the root mean square value of the current. And in the meantime, I'm going to assemble here a circuit, this circuit. <coughs> And, uh, and we will analyze what's, what's happening with the current as we vary the frequency. Um, so how about if you talk for a moment to each other, uh, make a brainstorm, and find out uh, what will be the value of the current. Go ahead. <coughs>
I don't think that you need a calculator for that. <laughs> These are numbers between 1 and 3, uh, 1 and 10. <coughs> uh, Andrew, c could you have a discussion on this? <coughs> All right, so uh, yesterday we uh, replaced those three terms. Uh, they were originally the ZR, ZL, and ZC, the impedance of the uh, different components to we put in the r squared and the uh, omega l and the one over omega c so we can just reverse that put in the uh, put the z's back in right okay so what Andrew says that this is really zr this is impedance square of impedance of the uh, resistor this is uh, impedance of the inductor and this is impedance of the capacitor, uh, which means that this is one ohm, one kilo ohm, this is one kilo ohm, and this is one kilo ohm, right? Yeah. Right. So in other words, uh, I mean, we are calculating, uh, Andrew, what are we calculating then? That would just... It Th this entire expression it is physically, what is the name of this entire root mean square, uh, uh, square root? The impedance of the circuit. This is impedance of the circuit, of the, <coughs> of the three systems together. Right now, if we plug in one, one, and one, how much are we going to get? One. One. Right now, this is something which actually a lot of you can get confused. Look, impedance of the resistor is one kilo ohm. Resistance of the inductor is one kilo ohm. Not resistance, impedance. And the impedance of the capacitor is one kilo ohm. So we have one kilo ohm here, one kilo ohm here, one kilo ohm here, and the entire thing has one kilo ohm as well. Yeah, if, we, if I had three resistors, each of them had a resistance of one kilo ohm, what would be the equivalent resistance of the circuit, Andrew? So you're saying there are three? This would be yeah. three kilo ohms, right? S see, uh, I mean, this is the most common error, actually, which, which people make, because they don't think what quantity uh, they are talking about, but what is the unit of quantity, because both impedance and resistance are measured in ohms, uh, right? So, so people think, well, how we, <coughs> how we combine ohms rather than how we combine resistances or how we combine impedances. All right, yeah, so, and you found that, uh, uh, and actually I was setting a trap for Andrew, obviously. I put three volts because I thought that he were, may fell into trap and find out that resistance, that impedance of the circuit is three kilo ohms and come up with a nice number one. Uh, <coughs> well, he didn't fall in the, in the congratulations, Andrew. <coughs> uh, so. We have three volts over here, one kilo ohm over, over here, which means that the current is going to be three uh, milliampers. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Now I have, I have here a, I assembled a circuit, <coughs> and the circuit contains. Uh, Let's say this is the, uh, the oscillating uh, terminal of the power supply. It's connected. Well, I didn't connect it in the same order, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter in which order we connect the, the elements, but it's connected to an inductor, <coughs> capacitor. This, here is a capacitor. And I connected the capacitor to rheostat. So I can, uh, I can vary with this knob over here, I can vary resistance of the resistor and it goes to the, uh, to the other terminal. All right. And, uh, uh -huh. Gr great. Oh, I know what I didn't do. <coughs> and do you have do you have an extra uh, adapter? I need an, an adapter. Oh, 
I know what I can do. Yes, we got it. Okay. <clears throat> so the circuit is already working. Uh, and uh, I measure simultaneously uh, voltage, a, a potential difference produced by the power supply and the current flowing in the circuit. So the uh, uh, red, the, the, the red plot represents current, uh, sorry, voltage, potential difference across the circuit, and green is the current uh, through the circuit. Why don't we now take a look what, what are the values? And, and here I control the, the, the uh, power supply. Uh, so right now, I, uh, I'm a peak value of the Applied voltage is uh, 10, uh, 10 volts. Frequency is 70 hertz. I read it here. Uh, actually, you should see it also from the, from the plot. Can you see that? Um, what is the, read the, the peak value of the voltage? Well. One division corresponds to two volts. So we have, this is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Indeed, the peak value of the voltage is 10 volts. Uh, let's take a look at the peak value of the current. And actually, properly, in order to see it, I will even change the uh, uh, scale. So now, one division corresponds to how many milliamperes? 50, right? It is five hundredths of an ampere, which means that this is 50 milliampers. Well, meaning that the current flowing in that circuit right now is 50 milliampers. All right, now I will play with, with frequency. Uh, how about if in steps of 10? And I want you, <coughs> what should we observe now? If I change the frequency. Okay, I'll change the frequency by 10. Can you see what has happened? Well, we have we we actually definitely noticed one thing that uh, that the plot was squeezed, right? Now, why does, why was it squeezed? Or how about if I go to 100? This will be easier to uh, <coughs> uh, to recognize because now look at the horizontal axis. One division corresponds to 10 milliseconds. Now uh, let's see how much time does it take for full oscillations for full oscillation of those electrical quantities. Why don't we look at the at the voltage here? So one oscillation starts here and ends there. These are uh, two divisions. No, this is just one division. This is one division, right? Which means that it takes. 10 milliseconds for one oscillation. Uh, so what is the frequency? In other words, how many oscillations we are going to have in one second? Now 10, 10 milliseconds times uh, 10 gives me 100 milliseconds. So 10 is the number of oscillations in one tenth of a second, which means that it's not the frequency. Yeah, if one oscillation, if it takes 10 milliseconds to complete one oscillation, how many oscillations we are going to have in one second? 100. 
Is it a surprise? Why not? It's not a surprise? Yes, because it's written here. Yeah. <laughs> it's written here that the frequency is 100, uh, uh, 100 hertz. All right. So you, you, you recognize that as I'm going to change frequency, the, plot is go the plots are going to squeeze. But at the same time, I want you to now look at, <laughs> at other effects. Uh, by the way, between 70 and, and 100, I, have already, I see already another difference. Yes, I'll come back now to 70. These are plus for 70. And these are plus for 100. What have you noticed? Other the change in frequency. Current decreased, right? So let's figure out from what value to what value, all right? So at 70, what was the value of the current? 50 milliampers. And as we increase frequency to 100, the current decreased to, to what value? Increased, very good. The current increased, not the decreased. And uh, well, I mean, an estimate, according to the estimate, I would say that it increased to about 70 milliamps. Can you see that? It increased to about 70 milliampers. All right, I'm going to continue increasing the frequency. Uh, so here we have 200. And let me now stretch the plot. Uh, the other way. What do you see about what, ca what kind of current we have now? More than 150. We have about 170 milliamps. Uh, let's continue increasing the frequency. All right. How about now? We have 100, we have 250 milliamps now at frequency uh, 270 hertz. Uh, I will continue, uh, how about if I stretch it again, and I'll continue increasing the frequency. What happens with the current? Now it is decreasing, yeah, it drops now. And if I go up, it gets current gets smaller and smaller. Now, how about if I change frequency by 100 hertz? Uh, doesn't affect much, but I mean, we see a decrease of the current. As we increase frequency, current is getting uh, smaller and uh, smaller. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, how about if I come back to the resonant frequency? Yeah, so what was the resonant frequency? What was the value of resonant frequency? About 270 hertz, right. Uh, actually, you can, you can notice one more thing about uh, at, uh, what happens at the resonant frequency. Um, yeah, because uh, right now we were, we were uh, concentrated on the discussion of uh, impedance and the uh, peak values or root mean square values, but compare phases of the two. Um, and, and, and recall that at w what was the conditions, how the impedance of inductor and capacitor were related at the resonant frequency. Yeah, remember that in order to get the smallest value of the equivalent impedance, we got it because both uh, impedance of a capacitor and impedance of a, an inductor both depend on uh, frequency. And one is high at low frequency and large at high frequency, and the other one behaves the other way. So we can find out a, a location or such a frequency that combined impedance of capacitor and inductor is zero, right? Now, uh, uh, how uh, we determine uh, phase angle? 
Yeah, it's inverse arc tangent of, I mean, let's think about, for example, complex impedance. Yeah, so if we take complex impedance, we will have to take imaginary part of complex impedance divided by real part of complex impedance. And how big is re, uh, imaginary part of complex impedance if elements are connected in series? It's this omega L minus 1 over omega C. This happens to be imaginary part. Yeah, so in the numerator, we'll have omega L minus uh, 1 over omega C, which at resonance is how much? Zero. Zero. Divided by real part. And real part is just resistance, right? So we'll have arc tangent of zero. Phase angle is arc tangent of zero. What is arc tangent of zero? Zero. All right, so we find that phase angle is zero. Now let's recall what a phase angle is. Anybody remembers the definition of phase angle? And don't tell me that it's an angle. <coughs> it has a, uh, I mean, like, we'll discuss what is geometrical interpretation that it is really an angle, but phase angle really is a difference in what, between what and what? Phase of the voltage and phase of the current. Well, <coughs> if the phase angle is zero, it means that voltage and current are in phase. Are they in phase here? Yes, yes right? We see, actually, how about if I change the uh, scales so that they don't look identical? We see that when uh, phase of the voltage is zero, phase of the current is zero. When phase of the voltage is, what is the phase of the voltage at this instant? When the voltage has the highest value. How much? Not two. Not ten. Phase of the voltage is not ten. Pi over two. Pi over two. Correct. Phase of the voltage is pi over two. And here we have uh, phase of the, oh, ten was the peak value. Right, F uh, but, but the phase is pi over 2, and phase of the current is also pi over 2. What's the phase at this instant of voltage and current? Pi, correct. Uh, <coughs> now, as we go away from the, from the resonant frequency, uh, the phases don't agree. Uh, so, how about if we take a look at uh, what happens now, and tell me what leads what. And what is the value? Tell me something about, well, how about if you estimate? What is the phase angle now? So what, let's start with this. What leads what? Who votes that voltage leads current? Uh, who votes that current leads voltage? Those of you who said that current leads voltage, you were right. Uh, look, let's say, at this instant. At this instant, what is the phase of the current? <coughs> zero, right? Correct. Over here is zero. Now we have to wait this much for the voltage to have phase zero. Now they both grow, and now which, which one uh, reaches the peak value first f after this instant? Yes, yeah, so now we have current reaches peak value here. So phase of the current is pi over 2 at this instant. Well, voltage waits another fraction of a second here. Uh, all right, so here we have that current leads voltage. Now the phase angle is positive, negative for 0 then. Who votes positive? Who votes negative? Those of you who voted negative, you are right. <coughs> and now, if we think about an angle, that it's an angle, so this is angle, I mean, phase angle is an angle between what and what? Kyle, how about you? Between current, not between current and voltage. This is not an angle between current and voltage. What's the current between one volt and seven amperes? There's difference between the phases, yeah, but I wanted now to say that it's an angle. Yeah, because <coughs> phase, phase angle 
Precisely, it's not an angle, but it has a geometrical interpretation of an angle if we draw something. Phasers, when we draw phasers, this is the angle between phaser of the voltage and phaser of the current. Uh, all right, so now we got it, uh, we got it, uh, uh, and by the way, I mean, looking at the, at the expression for, uh, for impedance, uh, in order to have a negative phase angle, uh, relate impedances of capacitor and an inductor, which has to be greater in order to have negative phase angle. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, phase angle is equal to arc tangent of uh, uh, well. How about if I write impedance of the uh, inductor minus impedance of the capacitor divided by impedance of the resistor. Uh, in the book you have it that this is omega L minus 1 over omega C divided by R. Uh, but my question is about the relationship between uh, impedances of an inductor and capacitor. So which one should be greater in order to have such a situation? that the phase angle is negative. Which one? Uh, impedance of the capacitor should be greater, right? Which means that actually what we have is that omega L must be smaller than 1 over uh, omega C, right? Which we, f f f we if we solve now for for frequency over here, we find condition that angular frequency has to be less than 1 over square root of L, uh, inductance of the inductor, multiplied by capacitance of the capacitor. Uh, <coughs> which means that we should have such a condition for low, frequ low frequency or high frequency? Or frequencies even. That the uh, current leads voltage. It happens for low frequencies. Frequencies which are smaller from this value. And this value is what? 1 over square root of LC. It's the value of what frequency? Resonant, resonant frequency. Yes. So if we have frequencies lower than resonant frequency, we will have a situation like this, that current leads voltage. Well. <coughs> Now, when, uh, what, sh what should I do in order to have positive phase angle? We will have to put frequency higher than resonant frequency and probably, I mean, you remember that, but if you didn't, how about if I just change it quickly? And now you see, can you see that the phase, that, the uh, that voltage leads current now? All right. Um, Oh, how come? Good. Uh, <clears throat> now I want to show you an application of uh, of. Uh, combination of resistors, capacitors, inductors for other uh, uh, circuits. Uh, the circuit which I discussed was called resonance circuit and, and it allows us to pick up the, ra the appropriate uh, station. Now to, to tune the sound, for example, in order to tune the sound, uh, uh, in, in when you drive a, a car and, and how do you tune the sound? You, you use two knobs, what are they? Treble and bass, correct. And they both control things which are refer, I mean, uh, circuits which are 
uh, called uh, filters. And uh, here I show an example how a high-pass filter works. And in a moment, we will see what does it mean, high-pass filter. Uh, so let's say that I assemble a circuit like that. It has a capacitor and a resistor. And here is an input for the signal. Here is an output for the signal. So this is just a fragment of a complex uh, circuit, like a radio. But we concentrate just on one stage. We have something over here which produces a signal. And the output is connected to, most likely, it will be a, an amplifier over here. So it's another stage. Now, amplifier is designed in such a way that uh, that, that re resistance through the amplifier, or impedance more precisely, by, by uh, uh, amplifier is high. So practically, all the current here flows through capacitor and the resistor, the current which is produced by the uh, source of the signal, or the stage, the stage of the, uh, of the circuit. And now let's see how various frequencies are transmitted through such an arrangement. So I want now to analyze the output voltage, how it is related to the input voltage. And the, the simplest way will be really to use complex analysis. So now I'm thinking about complex voltage between this point and this point. So really, this is a complex voltage across the resistor. Well, complex voltage across the resistor is equal to the current flowing through the resistor multiplied by impedance of the resistor. Uh, all right, now in order to relate uh, uh, the output voltage to the input voltage, I'm going to, re to relate current flowing in the resistor to the input voltage. Uh, now, if current flowing through this, through this stage of the circuit, through the amplifier, is uh, small, approximately zero, these two elements are connected approximately how? In series, co correct, because so compare current in the capacitor with current in the uh, resistor. They are approximately equal. Uh, and if, elements, if these elements are connected uh, in series, I can quickly find out complex impedance of that, because complex impedance of elements connected in series is equal to the sum of complex impedances. So this current, this complex current here, will be therefore uh, complex potential difference across the system multiplied by complex impedance of the system. And complex impedance of the resistor is its resistance. Complex impedance of the capacitor is 1 over I times angular frequency times capacitance of the capacitor. Well, so practically I have already there a relationship between uh, input voltage and output voltage, except that it's an awkward formula, so I will just simplify the formula and write it down that way. Uh, all right, so I have that output voltage now is equal to input voltage multiplied by a certain number. When we relate voltages, input and output voltage, of, f through a circuit, uh, that coefficient is referred to as a gain. So. So this expression is a complex gain. And now let's relate the root mean square values, or peak values, of the input voltage and output voltage, and the phase angle. So uh, peak uh, output voltage from this expression, it's a uh, peak, peak value of a, of a uh, I mean, if I have a complex uh, value, so in order to take peak, get peak value, I have to take absolute value of this number. So I need to find out absolute. If I take absolute value of both sides, I will have uh, peak value of the output voltage and peak value of the input voltage here. And absolute value of this number over there is this much. And uh, now this uh, is not phase angle. This is uh, this angle relates phase of the output with phase of the voltage. And uh, like phase angle, I have to take imaginary part and real part of the gain, of the complex gain, and uh, take arc tangent of that expression. 
All right, let's now try to draw. Uh, this is gain. Let's now try to draw how gain varies with frequency. And traditionally, actually, we draw it with logarithm of frequency. So what, gain, what is the value of the gain at low frequency? Well, at low frequency, omega is approximately 0. Right? So this expression is huge. Right? 1 over omega RC is huge. The denominator is huge. 1 over a huge number gives us small, close to 0. So at low frequency, gain is close to 0. Now let's see what happens with high frequency. If I put high frequency, let's say close to infinity. This expression is infinite, which means that this entire expression is 0. What is the value of the denominator? 1. How about gain? 1, which means that output voltage and input voltage have the same value. Right? So for low frequency, I start with 0. And as frequency is increasing, gain is slowly increasing. Then it suddenly goes up. And for high frequency, it approaches 1. Uh, well, why is it then high pass filter? It allows high frequency to pass and low frequency are blocked. They are suppressed. Low frequency do not tr are not transmitted through the circuit. High frequency are transmitted almost with gain 1. So, so they, they pass through unobstructed. Uh, all right. Um, I will use now this circuit tomorrow to, to see how the frequencies uh, are related. All right. So this will be all for, t uh, for t today, and see you tomorrow.